News. And I'm Michael Gomez. Welcome to our new cast at 6. And today's top news, France has elected a new president. And our reporter, Eloisa Peraza, will be discussing further information about this. Hello, Suzanne and Michael. France has just elected a new president, Emmanuel Macron, who is a centrist. Reports suggest he secured about 65% of the vote, while his opponent, Le Pen, had 34% of the support. His win is a historic victory for Macron, a former investment banker who is the youngest president at age 39. Emmanuel Macron was endorsed by former U.S. President Barack Obama. Our current president tweeted, quote, Congratulations to Emmanuel Macron on his big win today. As the next president of France, I look very much forward to working with him. Hi. I'm here with Isis, and we're going to be discussing about the new president of France. So, Isis, what are your opinions of Emmanuel Macron? Um, I think he'll be a great president of France. You know, I'm assuming he has great ideas since he voted more. He has ex he got extra votes on his election, so that's very good for him. So, Isis, with the new election of Emmanuel Macron, do you believe that there will be a better relationship between the U.S. and France? I do believe that. Um, he seems very educated and he knows what he's doing for his country. Trump may not be like what everyone expected, but he's smart, so he'll find a way to make better lives in France. Do you believe that the relationship between Emmanuel Macron and our current president Donald Trump, do you believe that they will find ways to compromise? I do believe that because Trump he has ways of navigating and negotiating, which is why he has a lot of money and another reason why he can affect the presidency because of his money because he'll help the economy. So I'm assuming that with his intellectual, with getting things to go with the final Okay, thank you, Isis. Thank you. I'm Elisa Peraza, report for PPN News. Back to you. There are many indications that the U.S. may be involved in an all-out war with North Korea. The U.S. has plans for preemptive strikes. U.S. officials believe North Korea is set to test nuclear weapons. American military forces will be moved into positions in the region to destroy the missiles and facilities. North Korea has been testing a number of missiles. Japan is also preparing for a North Korean attack. There is a possibility that North Korea is already capable of shooting missiles with Syrian as warheads and quote said Japan, Japanese Prime Minister Shino Abe. In other news, a 10 year old boy with autism was arrested as well as charged with a third degree felony and spent the night in juvenile detention. John Benjamin Haywood was arrested when his mother took him for a standardized test. Young Haywood was arrested on April 12 for the incident which occurred in October. He was allegedly kicking and scratching the educational assistant who was working with him, Scott Badish. President of Autism Society America told the Post, and I quote, it is a tremendous failure by two allegedly responsible institutions, which are the police and the school. Action. Thank you for that, Susanna. And now we go with Brian Lovato. A mom was ordered by a judge to stop homeschooling her daughter after the girl was falsely labeled illiterate. A mom Nessa had moved to a different county and had enrolled her in a private school, but soon realized homeschooling was a better option. The private school had contacted the DDP director of pupil personnel. We had called Vanessa and told her that she needed to file a notice of intent. But the following day, the DPP filed charges claiming Vanessa had neglected her daughter's education. A judge ordered Vanessa to enroll her daughter in school. The agency homeschool the Legal Defense Association, also known as HSLDA, evaluated the girl and found that she was working above her capability. The counselor working with the HSLDA stated no idea what someone at the school would have said that the girl didn't know the alphabet. She's a good reader. Once more, once made public, the prosecutor's job case the judge agreed that mom could continue. How do you feel about the situation, sir? I really feel that this situation should be handled another way, not be charged. This is a private school charging a mother, which is kind of dumb, in my opinion, because this is 
her issue, not the private schools. I tease it. All right, thank you, Brian, for that amazing lecture. And today's last story will be held by our reporter, Elijah Smith. Back to you, Elijah. Hi, my name is Elijah Smith from PPN News, and we will be talking about six months in jail for selling baked goods. Three home bakers, Lisa Kravitz, Chris Marion, and Della Inns, are challenging a state law where baking homemade cookies, brownies, and other treats can be punished with up to six months in jail and a thousand dollar fine. Lafayette County Judge Duane Georgeson will decide on May 31st if the ban on homemade baked goods is un unconstitutional. The three women make their family income by selling baked goods. Ironically, Della Inns is still able to sell homemade foods such as jams and pickles, but not baked goods. Wisconsin and New Jersey are the only states that ban the sales of homemade baked goods. So I'm here with Carla. I'm going to ask you, do you think it's fair for three women to go to jail for six months and pay a $1,000 fine for selling baked goods? Uh, I think it's not fair at all because um, those women aren't harming anybody. It's just, yeah, baked goods, cookies and whatnot. They're trying to make a living out of it. And having to pay six months, you said? Yeah. Having to pay six months in jail just for it, and then also a thousand dollar fine for it, uh, I really think is yeah, it's to totally unfair. It's yeah. Stupid. But out of one of the three girls, they still can sell, but they can't sell big goods. They can sell jam, pickles, like stuff like that without big goods. Right? But they're still gonna have to pay the fine and pay three months, no, six months in jail. So that's still unfair. It's pointless. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah. Hi, Smith from PPN News. I throw it back to you, Michael and Susanna. All right. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you, Elijah. That concludes our news at 6. Thank you for joining PPN News. I'm Susanna. I'm Michael. See you again at 10. Have a great evening, everyone. That's my name. <laughs> That's my name. I can, we can keep on going. Okay. Yeah.